Welcome to Donington Park for the last round of the BRSCC Formula Jedi Championship. The fog has fallen this morning. That means that the start of racing delayed, but it gives us the opportunity to talk to some of the runners in the paddock. Dan, third season in the Jedi's, very competitive uh, form of motorsport. How's it been for you so far? Thoroughly enjoyed it. The last three years have been really good. Good learning curve. Um, we've got the car really up to speed now. Uh, and I think we're in there competing with, with anybody. The car's as fast as anybody else is out there and uh, really enjoying it. And prior to this, you were in the long circuit supercarts, which again is another very fast championship. The transition across to Jedi's, was it difficult? No, it wasn't really. The, uh, the carts are very, very similar. Um, I used to run the Division 1 250 Twin Supercarts uh, and the, yeah, the, the transition across it is, 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 is really very, very similar from a speed point of view, from a sensation point of view. It's kind of all the same. There's uh, some different tricks in setting up the cart compared to setting the car up, but we've learnt that over the past three years and it's, uh, it's all going well now. These Jedis are fairly awesome machines. What's it like behind the wheel? Oh, it's it's the biggest adrenaline buzz behind the wheel. It is really really good fun. The the things are so so fast. I mean we're doing speeds not far off sort of Formula Renault to to Club Formula Three speeds uh, for a fraction of the budget. Uh, they're very very quick in the corners, exceptionally punchy acceleration wise, and the braking is just awesome. So Lee, first place in the penultimate race. Uh, we now go to the final race, uh, third in the championship. How do you feel? Uh, pretty happy to be fair. Of um, I've had sort of uh, a, a steady start to the season and sort of built it up with some good results at the end. So hopefully, if I can finish with a, another win today, then I can maybe grab second. So that'll be a good end to the season, really. And um, a very competitive championship. Uh, who do you see as your nearest rival? Uh, yeah, it's been very competitive all year. I think there's sort of been six or seven people really in with a shout of winning races. So. Uh, probably this weekend you've got Dan who's, who's quick who's also pretty close to me in the championship Alok, he's done, he's done well all year he's been quite uh, consistent through the year so yeah um, yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be close racing out there so Matthew final race of the season uh, currently second in the championship um, so what are your tactics as you go into this final race um, it's a difficult one because obviously we want to go faster, we want to win, but at the same time, since I'm fighting for second in the championship, I've just got to be aware of where my main rivals are and really concentrate on them. And at the moment they're behind me, so really tactics are to finish and try and consolidate a podium position, something like that. Second season for you in the Jedi's. Last year, a very uh, good result of seventh. Podium position this year, potential. So um, what's next? Well, like anything else, it all boils down to money. And at the moment, we're really looking for some sponsors for next year. Um, to be honest, I'd like to continue doing what I'm doing. Um, the Jedi's represents fantastic value for money, close racing, uh, sort of real grassroots motorsport stuff. So I'd be really happy to continue this next year if we can get the financial package in place. So, look, final uh, race of the season. Uh, quite a mixed season for you. We saw you at Alton Park, but obviously you had some mechanical failure there. How are you feeling as you go into the final race? I uh, unfortunately had a bad race yesterday, I had a good start, uh, I was fifth and unfortunately on the fastest section just before the whole all happened, uh, I had a suspension failure. I'm a point behind the third guy and I'm, I'm about 12 points behind the, the second guy so there's still a chance. What are your thoughts as you go out there and any changes to the car? Uh, we're still going to go out on the sleeks because it's still not wet enough to actually go out and, and put on the wet tyres. Uh, these cars are quite light cars, so it's, it's, it's fun to drive on these uh, slippery conditions, but it's going to be a challenge. I'm, I think I'm going to start P5, uh, which is not, it's not a bad position to start, but to be honest, to be in top three, to finish in top three uh, in the championship, I either have to win or the, 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 the other two guys have to have a DNF. So it's, it's, going, to be, it's going to be a challenging race. It's, it's not been a bad season, to be honest. Uh, regardless of how, where I finish, uh, I think I've enjoyed my season so far. So it's been good. Alok starting fifth on the grid. Keep your eyes open for the white car coming around the chicane onto the grid, which is headed by James McLachlan. Matthew Bett alongside. Second row, Lee Morgan. Next to him is Dan Clues. Alok Iyengar fifth with Michael Watson, the club class pole man sixth. Then Jonathan Packer and Paul Butcher. Richard Moorcroft and Benjamin Spurge on row five. Six row, Rob Sale and Adam Walker with Barry Armstrong completing the 13-strong grid here for our last race of the year. Round 14 of the 
2012 BRSCC Formula Jedi Championship. Drivers can ditch their worst two scores. And there's a problem for 99, Michael Watton, the club class champion. It's going to be a non-start for him in the last race of the season. But it's the ex catron racer, James McLachlan, who got it on pole. He's looking to join the championship full-time next year. Can he get away well with Matthew Bett alongside? A little bit of creeping from Matthew Bett, but I don't think he gained a huge advantage from that. be interesting to see what the officials make of it. But look at coming through is Dan Clues into Redgate. It, there definitely wasn't an advantage for Matthew Bett because he's back in second place and Dan Foos takes up the lead. Alok Iyengar is off onto the dirt, got, I think forced onto the mud a little bit there and he's down in fifth position. So, well, pretty much equal to where he started, but it's Dan Clues leading. Matthew Bett having a look up the inside. James McLachlan in third. Quite a culture shock, I would imagine, coming through from Catrums into Slicks and Wings single-seaters. You've heard the drivers saying how much they enjoy it. And now a chance for uh, a lot of people that maybe haven't seen this sort of racing before on TV to say, I, I quite fancy having a go at that. It is very cost effective. And for the speeds you get, you know, it's on par, if not faster than, than uh, Formula Renault or Club Formula 3. And these little cars, very good indeed. And we've got a challenge on for third place. Now coming up the inside is Lee Morgan. Lee Morgan passes James McLachlan coming into the chicane. Well, we can forgive the newcomer that, but I'll tell you what, if he's back next year, seeing the pace that he's had in qualifying, James McLachlan is going to be a force to reckon with for sure. He's back in fourth at the moment. There's some changes going on behind. A lock seems to be dropping back as well. As they go into Redgate corner, and it's still Dan Clues leading from Matthew Bett in second position. Off goes Benjamin Spurge, the club class racer qualified second in the club class and he's running equal fourth in the championship with Rob Sale so now up front we've got Matthew Bett in front who's managed to pass Dan Clues Dan's now down to third place and coming under attention from James McLachlan Lee Morgan from third on the grid is up to second Lee of course won round 13 or 12a for those of you that are superstitious that's his first win in Jedi yesterday and uh, today's racing's been a little bit delayed by fog early on, but you can see everything clear now. And this is a superb piece of action here. Look how close these cars are. Now, many of you will probably be wondering where the name Richard Mitchum is. Well, he doesn't need to do this round because he'll count them as he's dropped scores, but he will finish the season on 425 points. But we've still very much got the battle for second place at the moment. Matthew Bett, the race leader, and there's a problem for Dan Clues. Dan Clues has got a problem and drops back. I think he might go into retirement. Now, the car in the lead at the moment is second in the championship. So, Matthew Bett on 261 points. Third is Lee Morgan, the man behind him, on 243. So, if Lee can overtake him, he's, he's not actually going to necessarily benefit points-wise. He will from a pride point of view. Lee Morgan, who has had... Uh, one podium coming into this meeting and took uh, his first win in the first race so that's a big miles, milestone for him but it's Matthew Betts so Matthew Bett who is there who's had six podia plus another one in race one uh, today and he's coming under pressure and looking down the inside goes Lee Morgan Lee Morgan goes through well he's got the habit of getting up into the lead and is he going to make winning a habit now James McLachlan's still there in third place not too far behind and this is the view from Adam Walker onboard camera a little bit of skew and he's looking down the inside of the number 10 car that's Rob Sale ex-club class champion top runner on the short ovals many of the drivers came up through karting and Rob a second generation driver who did Grand Prix midget racing, single-seater cars, open-wheel cars on quarter-mile short ovals, bags of experience, bags of talent in the car. Not so much money in the bank, which is why he's decided to come and race this cost-effective formula. Now this is Adam Walker looking to try and go past. And Walker's through. Now remember, Adam Walker's running in a current spec engine, Rob Sale in the older engine class, car number 10. So he probably might have expected Rob to lose the place there, but Rob comes from Kings Lynn, very much a racing family. His dad, Harry, a multi-champion on the short tracks. His brother, David's raced as well, ably 
helped by Mum Anne, who I know will be watching this coverage, and they thoroughly enjoy their racing in Jedi. So this one panning out pretty well at the moment. Richard Warcroft in the mix at the moment, ahead of Adam Walker. And Rob Sale down behind them, as we said, the former club class champion. Adam's camera still a little bit askew, and that's due to the forces that are exerted on the cars. Adam comes from Leeds, self-prepared car, as indeed most of these are. As we go back to the front, Lee Morgan getting away. Matthew Bett in second. James McLachlan closing up. There he is in 18. Thoroughly enjoying his switch over from sports car racing. And I tell you what, he's having a good go for second place here. I wonder if he's going to be able to do it. Out of coppice and down the exhibition straight. Well, he started on pole position. We know he's got the speed. And now he's learning all about Jedi racecraft. He's, he's going to have a look. He's coming out of the slipstream. Might be a little bit too far back as they come into the chicane. Back in fourth place at the moment, Paul Butcher. Just saw the orange and purple car in the background as Lee Morgan goes up across the line. There is Butcher also making progress through the field. Is Barry Armstrong, car number five from the back of the field. So it's been a good drive from Barry. And cracking stuff from James McLaughlin, the, the battle for second still on, and Alok Haengar's off! A dismal weekend for him, suspension failure yesterday, and he's in the gravel here. So it looks like his chances of reclaiming second in the championship are out with him in the gravel. Back with the race leader, Lee Morgan still ahead of Matthew Bett in second. James McLaughlin in third, join us after the break for the conclusion. <laughs> 